Okay, my task today is to attempt to describe excellence in a teacher. Uh, this is in one sense, I think, an impossible task because every teacher is an individual. Every teacher can be excellent in wildly different ways. And yet, I think there is something, there is an experience that we all share. We've all had that one great teacher who inspired us, who shaped within us a love for a particular academic discipline. We've all had that particular moment, that person that we remember when we're trying to figure out what is the wise thing to do. Uh, that sense of excellence today is what I want to attempt to capture. Uh, my method will be pretty straightforward. Uh, at heart, I'm still a history teacher who loves stories. Uh, so I wanna tell you about three excellent teachers. And at the end of my talk, I wanna describe specifically the qualities that I think mark those teachers as truly excellent. These pictures of excellent teachers uh, are for us models to emulate. Uh, I hope they remind you of a favorite teacher that you had years gone by. I hope they call you to be like your heroes. Uh, these teachers should remind us all of the greatness of our profession. No other job asks us to shape eternal souls, to help children find their inner nobility. When I think about teaching, I'm reminded of Jesus's words, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For to such as these belong the kingdom of heaven. And with that love of children goes a warning. For the one who misleads uh, these little children, it will be better for him to have a millstone tied around his neck and be thrown into the sea. Now, Jesus, of course, is not talking specifically about the teaching profession, but his value of children should be a warning to us. We cannot settle for anything less than excellence. We are entrusted with the most precious gift. The stewardship of these children requires nothing short of our absolute best. What then does that best look like? I offer three living pictures of excellent teachers. My mother was my first teacher. Uh, she decided in the early 1990s that she would homeschool me and eventually my two younger brothers. Uh, she followed her friend Michelle's advice and got the sunlight curriculum. My mom pored over her lesson plans and she figured out each week what we were going to do. She worked so hard to make learning engaging. I remember the sing, spell, read, and write phonics curriculum. There was a raceway chart on our refrigerator, and I got to move the little car one step closer to the finish line with every phoneme that I learned. We used a math curriculum called Matthew C. It had all these manipulables that I got to move around and piece together to demonstrate different operations. We had art lessons and endless discussions about why exactly the artist would put himself in the painting. Um, all of these things my mom did in order to really accomplish something larger. Uh, for my mom, it was never just about the actual lesson. It was always about inspiring me and my brothers to learn to love learning. That was for her the end goal. Uh, now, my mom would, buy, she'd be the first one, if she were here, she would tell you she is no academic genius. Uh, today, she would be labeled ADD really fast. Of what she lacked in natural intellectual gift, she made up for in passion and perseverance. It's that passion and perseverance that really led uh, to long-term success. Uh, today, my brothers and I are in three wildly different fields, but all three of us love learning in all of these different directions that life has taken us. My mom is an excellent teacher and she inspires others to love learning. The second teacher I wanna tell you about is Mr. Higgins. Uh, I have made it through my first year at a private Christian high school, and the famous teacher, Dr. Gertis, had left Stonebridge School to teach at Liberty University. His successor, uh, Mr. Higgins, was somebody I didn't know. Fortunately uh, for me, Mr. Higgins didn't know very much about teaching yet. Uh, you see, Mr. Higgins was fresh out of Patrick Henry College, and he, was, took, he took a teaching job in order to weigh his graduate school options. He taught me 11th and 12th grade history, and he didn't know that assigning 50 pages a week of primary sources for history and economics was mildly abusive. Uh, <laughs> he, he didn't know that students just couldn't handle the raw materials of history. And he didn't know that we all lacked an attention span for college level work. Now, because Mr. Higgins didn't know any of these things, he worked us harder than any other teacher at Stonebridge School. It was the first time I had had a teacher who expected me to love his subject as much as he did. Uh, and he also expected us to bring the full weight of intellectual investigation to the task of reading. Mr. Higgins treated us like young college students, and as such, he demanded that we rise to the level of his expectations. 
With Mr. Higgins, I first read John Locke, Thomas Hobbes, almost all the Federalist Papers, major court cases in constitutional law, and so on. His class was so rigorous that uh, when I was a sophomore at Hillsdale College taking Constitution, it felt like a repeat of my high school class. Mr. Higgins was a great teacher. He loved his subject and he insisted that we engage it fully. He thought we could do way more than we students thought was possible. And because he insisted that it was possible, we read far more and we engaged the material far more deeply than we otherwise would have. The third teacher I wanna to mention today is Dr. Stewart. Dr. Stewart exemplified the Socratic method of teaching and in doing so, he taught me how to read and how to write. He showed me that behind every substantial text lies questions worth discussing. His class method was almost always the same. After syllabus day, he would assign 30 to 50 pages of reading for each class. He would then walk into class and say, any questions from the reading? And then he would answer as many questions as we had. Uh, once we had run out of questions, he would point out all the things that were in the text that we had just missed. Uh, he always had a plan, but he would get to his plan through our questions. And if time remained, he would then turn, to, he would flip the script and ask us questions, forcing us deeper and deeper into the source material. I took history and culture classes from Dr. Stewart and he profoundly shaped my understanding of teaching. His most effective teaching, however, happened outside the classroom. As a college professor, Dr. Stewart offered regular office hours. And whenever paper season would roll around, I got in the habit of taking rough drafts to him. I would sit on his yellow couch as he ripped my papers apart word by word. He had this amazing way of interrogating all the implications behind every word chosen in a sentence. And without ever being disrespectful, Stewart refused to accept anything less than excellent work. He believed that we as students could become great writers, and that it was part of his job as a teacher to tell us every time we had failed to achieve clarity in our writing. If we could first make our writing clear, then we could figure out how to make it beautiful. Uh, without clarity, however, writing would fail to achieve its purpose. Stewart also maintained strong uh, connections with students outside the class context. He hosted uh, an annual pig roast at his house for all college students. He organized research trips to Michigan State and Notre Dame's libraries. Uh, he helped students learn how to do archival research. I remember one trip to a Canadian cemetery as Dr. Stewart wanted us to see how different symbols were used across time. And the place to go to that was a working cemetery that had been in operation for 500 years, and that was in Canada. Uh, Stewart was a great teacher who shaped his students in profound ways. Good teachers transmit knowledge, but excellent teachers shape the souls of their students. Excellent teachers inspire students to love their subjects. Excellent teachers have high expectations for student engagement. Excellent teachers invest in their students. And in so doing, excellent teachers shape the souls of their students and help them become who they are becoming, to paraphrase Kierkegaard. So how do you become a more excellent teacher? I wanna close with three pieces of practical advice. First, love your subject and fight for it to matter. No one else will care about your subject if you do not. It is your job to insist that students must love math, grammar, history, language, fine arts, electives, literature, science. Be the embodiment of your academic disciplines and never forget that you have the opportunity to bring students into the conversations that your academic disciplines specialize in. Secondly, hold your students to high expectations for engagement. The wider culture insists that students can only pay attention to something uh, the length of the currently viral TikTok. Insist that students be better. They have the capacity. Aristotle observed more than two millennia ago that students, I'm sorry, that all men by nature desire to know. Your students have the capacity and they will rise to the level of your expectations. Expect great things from your students. Third, study your subject so that you are someone they can learn from. Melissa Edwards was my first Thales administrator and she gave me this advice my first year teaching. Quote, students need to know that you actually have something they can learn. So what I take from that is that as teachers, we must always be ready to go beyond the lesson, go past the textbook, uh, be ready to ask some deeper question, to tell some great story, to create some exercise that enables students to practice the skill that they've just learned. As teachers, we must always be reading so that we teach from the overflow. 
Make your classroom a feast. Set forth the knowledge, skills, and experiences so that students know your class is one where they will learn. As we look out at the coming year and this week of preparation, think about the teachers who shaped you. How can you be that teacher for your students this year? If you put in the work to become excellent, you will be a teacher who shapes the souls of your students. Let's make this an incredible year of excellent teaching.